Apple is known to make some very expensive devices. I mean, there is a reason that everybody talks about the Apple tax, but this is the iPhone SE from 2020, and I've been using this bad boy for the past month. The thing is though, it has one of the most powerful processors in a phone today, and this thing costs, wait, it costs how much? It costs 400 bucks? So is it any good? Let's find out. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. So like I said in the last MacBook Pro video, I'm a pretty big Apple fan. I use Apple computers, their watches, and their phones. So while I'm gonna give you my honest opinion today, understand that those opinions come from somebody that already likes this kind of thing. I'm not only saying it because the sunken cost fallacy is tricking my brain into thinking that I'm actually the winner here. That didn't happen, right? So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna cover the things that I really like and the things that I don't like so much about this tiny budget phone after solidly using it for one month. And to make sure that we're all grounded in reality, to make sure that we're all just like set in stone, let's start off with the negatives first. Because if we start off with the positives, then it's gonna be too hooray. So if we start with the negatives, I think we'll start on a better footing. The first thing that I haven't liked over the last month and the worst thing about this phone is the battery life. Now, it could be with all the social distancing and the working from home that I'm doing, I'm spending way too much time playing around on my phone. That, that could very well be the case because I spend a lot of my time now uh, tweeting. Ask my wife and she would absolutely say that that's the case. But my YouTube slash Twitter slash shopping experience aside, I find that I have significantly less battery power than on my iPhone 11. Basically, every single day that I use the iPhone SE 2, I find that it's gotta get plugged in right around 3 p.m. Eastern. So after about roughly eight or nine hours of semi-regular use, I, I wake up at around 6 a.m. every day, part and parcel of being the everyday dad with an early rising seven year old. But that's about eight or nine hours of solid use and that is strikingly bad. A way to know that it's pretty bad is I never really talk about battery life in any of my other videos because if a device, whether camera, computer, phone, etc., if that device can last a day or a project's length of time for me, I don't actually care how big the battery size is or how much farther it could go. I just don't care. When I go to bed, I plug in my phone, whatever it's charged. I don't care. Like all that it has to do is what I need it to do. And the iPhone SE 2 just sucks when it comes to battery life. I mean, it is a smaller phone, so they put a smaller battery in there, but just ugh. Something else that doesn't exactly bother me as much, but I know it is considered a negative. So I will bring it up here just for awareness's sake is if you don't like the little camera notch that iPhones have had for the last few years, you better buckle up for these bezels. These are serious bezels. This is basically an iPhone 8 with a lot of the newer internals. So this has the same bezels as that phone and it, it takes a big chunk out of the top and bottom real estate on the display. Doesn't matter if you're in portrait or in landscape, you're gonna be staring at a lot of very obvious nothing if you have to look at the edges of this device. For me again, for me personally, it doesn't bother me but that might just be because I used an iPhone 7 Plus forever, for like two and a half years I used an iPhone 7 Plus, and I'm just like, they've got me brain, they've got me in the brain, like I'm indoctrinated into that sort of thing. Save yourself, I'm just too, I almost just fell off my chair. So you will have to accept that this is a brand new iPhone internal with an older style body. If you are somebody that has a problem with old school iPhones, or it's not really old school, like middle school. Like middle school, not, I'm not that old. If you have a problem with middle school iPhones, you are just not gonna like this, even if it came with free ice cream. Unless you are like me and will change any opinion for free ice cream. You want me to switch to a Windows computer? You know what to do. Blah, blah, okay. That's enough negatives. That's enough negatives. There weren't that many. There were only what, like two solid ones? Let's talk about the positives because there are so many positives about this device. First up in the things that I not only like, but have absolutely like shattered my brain in awe, the power. Like I said in the beginning of the video, the iPhone SE 2 2020, we'll just call it two. Uh, this thing comes equipped with Apple's current bleeding, like the cutting edge of their phone processors, and that's the A13 Bionic chip. 
There are thousand dollar plus flagship phones out there that don't have this kind of horsepower. And not only does it have a powerful brain, but it uses that power in remarkable ways. And again, that's not really something I thought I'd ever say about a phone because like battery life, I generally don't care about how powerful my phone is. I only care that it's powerful enough to take some pictures, send some text messages, and let me watch a funny cat video on the internet from time to time. But this processor is something special. And for proof, all you have to do is go back to my video where I edited a full 4K video on the iPhone SE. Not only did I edit it, I rendered it, and with the new iOS support, it's remarkably easy to pair a keyboard and a mouse to this. You can also plug in an external display, and just, I mean, so easily, you can turn this into a truly mobile workstation. I can't think of another phone that I've used that does the same thing. This phone easily handled editing the footage I threw at it, and here's the real mind just destroying part. It rendered that footage into a 4K file way, way faster than real time. It's faster at rendering than my MacBook Pro, faster than my iPad Pro, and it's faster than my $5,000 iMac Pro. This thing, I don't wanna continue saying crazy or remarkable or amazing, but I don't know how else to say it. Legitimately shocking stuff here, and darn, I've gotta say, I'm impressed. Like, I am impressed with what Apple did here. Something that might be a controversial statement to make, I'm a controversial person. I actually really like the size here. Depending on your phone preference, this could go as either a positive or a negative. Some people just like big phones. I don't understand it, but some people do. I just really like how this feels in the hand. Now, I personally, you've heard me say this before, I use an iPhone 11 non-pro as my daily driver phone, and that's like, right at the edge of what I think might be just like, it's almost too big. I love that phone, but if it were a little bit bigger, I don't know that I'd enjoy it as much. It just, that's too big. I had a seven plus for a long time, did not like how big it was. The SE2 is perfectly sized for my hands. And because of that, it makes it easier when I'm texting people or when I'm scrolling through my Twitter timeline. Plus, I'm a bit of a runner. I like to run four times a week. And I also like bringing my phone with me to listen to podcasts or visual essays. And having a smaller phone is just so much easier when you're running. Like if you have to, if the phone's so big that you have to hold it like this, it really gets your hands tired. And if you can just like easily palm it, that's so much nicer. You don't wanna be squeezing your device too hard while running. It might sound crazy, but making too tight a fist while running, it just wastes energy. Like throughout your whole like chain of motion, you don't wanna screw it up by squeezing devices too hard. I really like this. Another thing that I really like, and again, for the price of this device, it's crazy, the camera. If you watched the unboxing video I made about the SE2, in the title of that video, I called this the new standard camera. And I stand by that because this is what I recommend to people from now on and already have recommended as the best budget camera that you should buy if you wanna start out and get into photography and online video. I know that's not a popular statement. I'm a huge camera nerd myself. Heck, the camera we're currently using right now is a Netflix approved 6K camera and it's way, I typed that way with 10 A's in the script to make sure that you know that it is way, this camera is way overkill for YouTube. But I'm a camera snob and even though I love my 10-bit 4K and 10-bit 5.9K, I still think the iPhone SE2 is the best value camera you can buy. For 400 bucks, you're not gonna find anything better and that includes DSLRs, mirrorless, and compacts. This just beats them all because you will get a good enough image quality and you get all of the other benefits that we talked about earlier. Photographers are not gonna like to hear that, but there's a reason that you're, the camera industry is dying right now. You'll get plenty of dynamic range in photographs with a lot of the high-end smart HDR high dynamic range technology from the iPhone Pro line making its way down here. Now, I don't wanna say that this is the equivalent of the 11 Pro, it's not. You don't get the newest sensors and the cameras and options of the iPhone 11 or 11 Pro, but darn it for 400 bucks, you get more than just about any other brand will give you. The only thing I don't like about the camera, and really the only reason why I wouldn't switch to this phone permanently, is you do lose that ultra wide angle selfie camera from the newer iPhone 11. I'm an older YouTuber, I'm in my 30s. I use the iPhone 11 to take my Twitter selfies all the time. If this had that wide angle front selfie camera, I would 
totally switch over to this as my as my daily driver. And you know what? Here, what we're gonna do, let's do a quick vlogging test where we just like hop outside and use this real quick. So I can even show you that this would be just as awesome as a small travel YouTube video camera. See you out there. <laughs> okay, and welcome to, like I said, we're doing a quick vlogging test with the iPhone SE2. And it, there's a storm coming like real quick. So we, uh, we had to just hop outside real quick to do this. But yeah, if you wanted to use this as just a travel video camera, this is the front facing camera. This is the front facing camera on a $400 cell phone. This is, if you're not impressed, I don't, I don't know how else to impress you. Like this camera, this phone has blown me away for its price performance. And especially as you know, a video person, like told you, I have a Netflix compliant camera that I make my videos on. Like this stuff is impressive. It's 1080p, looks great and is very, very affordable. This is the stabilization as I'm like hand holding the camera right here. Like, look, you can see this little bit that I'm just holding onto the camera with. Like, can you see that? You, probably, you can't, you can't see that. But yeah, stabilization is great, audio is great, and the picture quality is great. And since it's raining now, let's hop back inside. <laughs> okay, and we're back. But if you use the iPhone 11 line, that has that face unlock feature. It has the face ID where you just turn the phone, it unlocks. This does not have that. It has touch ID where you can set up a fingerprint into the home button and you just tap that and then the phone unlocks. I actually really like touch ID better. I just like having physical buttons, even if it's kind of like a fake physical button. I like having those where I can get them instead of always having to like turn my face to the phone. My hand, it's easier to move my hand than my face. The last major thing I like, and we've kind of danced around this so far during this whole video, the price. $399, which is the base model with the lowest amount of memory, and that's what this is, for all of these positives is nuts. Seriously, what other company out there will give you this level of functionality at this price point? In this price point, and we'll say generously between $300 and $500, there are some real gems out there. The Pixel 3 Alpha, which is an awesome camera phone, the Samsung S10e, the Samsung S9, there's a lot of Android phones out there. This is a crowded field but none of those devices, not a single one of those devices has as powerful a processor. And even if you don't, so let's say you don't want to render 4K videos, you don't want to do cool camera stuff, all you want is a phone to be a phone. In practical terms, what that processor gets you is years of support from Apple. The iPhone SE2 will be receiving updates way into the future on the back of this system. And I think that is a huge selling point. But at the end of the day, so what, right? Is the iPhone SE2, the update from 2020, is this worth buying? Uh, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And I don't mean this as the Apple snob that I'm definitely gonna sound like. I know I'm gonna sound like an Apple snob, I'm sorry. I don't mean it that way. I have no idea why anybody would buy a phone that's not an iPhone now. At this price point, with this level of features, everybody can afford an iPhone if they really want it. Unless you have very specific needs or you just hate iOS, I don't get why you would buy anything else. This is basically an all-in-one computer that's more powerful than some flagships, has a better camera than cameras at its price, fits everywhere, and is very reasonably priced. And not just this, but if you really wanna get into the Apple ecosystem, if you wanna get an Apple Watch, you wanna get into AirDrop, you wanna get into all of that stuff, here you go. Like, I don't know what else to say. This is the best entry-level phone that I've ever seen. It's not even close. I don't even know how Apple's gonna top this in the future, because how do you put more stuff in a phone like this? And if you did like this video or you don't believe me and you wanna see how powerful the iPhone SE2 can be, I will leave that video right here. Just watch me edit and render in lightning speed a 4K video with just this tiny phone and like a dongle plugged into a monitor. Click right here to find out. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.